This viscast focuses on the laboratory analysis techniques that you're required to use in energy and motion throughout the five labs. Let's have a look at the data which is taken here. This data may represent voltages or a series of temperatures like in the first lab. What you can see here is that the measurements have some kind of distribution. Every time I've taken a measurement, the numbers change slightly. There may be some various reasons for that. Maybe I used different instruments to make my measurement. Maybe different groups made the measurement. Either way, we'd like to characterize that distribution of measurements. And the best way of doing that is to look at the average value or the mean value and using the standard deviation. The average value tells you exactly that. It's just a sum of those values. That's what this uh, summation sign says. I sum up these numbers here and I divide by the total number of values I've got. So here I've got 10 values. If I was to sum those up and then divide by 10, what I'll find is that the mean value will be just slightly less than those five middle values because I've got three values below that and two values above. So this represents my mean value, which I describe symbolically with my brackets around x. Sometimes that's also written as x with a bar over the cross, meaning average. The standard deviation tells you about the distribution. How far away are my values from the mean value? The way you can think about the standard deviation is if I was to bin the data, that is to make a histogram of the data, then I'd find more points close to the mean. And then as I move further away from the mean value, the number of points I'd find would get less and less. The mean value tells you where the peak is. The standard deviation tells you how wide the distribution is. How do we calculate the standard deviation? We're using this expression here. How does that work? Let's have a look inside the square root and inside the summation to this term here in the brackets. Xi minus the mean. So Xi is the value at the counter i equals 1 and then I have to subtract off the mean value. So in fact, what I'm finding in that brackets is like this little length that I've drawn here, or this length here, or this length here, 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 and here. Some of these values would be positive if the points you measure are above the mean. Some of these values would be negative if your point you measure is below the mean. So if we were to sum them up as they are, they might all cancel to zero. That really doesn't describe the distribution. So what we do is we square them. Okay, so squaring those will make all of those lengths positive and they'll make them bigger because they're squared. And then what we can do is sum all those up. And we sum them up and divide by n minus 1, which is like taking the average of those quantities, something like that length there. And then finally, we take the square root which then returns us to something which now looks like the average deviation from the mean, or the standard deviation for that matter. Next we want to look at when you collect data which has a linear dependence, how can we describe the distribution of that data? Well, what we can do is we can construct a line of best fit which goes through the data. If we suspect the behavior is linear, and we can draw a straight line that goes through that data. And the line of best fit basically means we can move it around until we think we've got roughly half the points above the data or half the points below the data. Maybe the line's constrained to go through the origin. That might be nice. Maybe it's not. Either way, we can work out a line of best fit and from the equation to the straight line, we know that the line is y equals mx plus c, we can work out the, the slope of that line of best fit by looking at my rise divided by my run, or if you like we can take y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1, where we can read um, x2 and y2 off of it that runs through that line, and down here we can read x1 and y1 as numerical values. But you saw beforehand, I could move that line around a little bit. So there's some uncertainty in which is the line of best fit. Maybe this is a better line to go through. Maybe the line should have a steeper slope and, and you know go down a bit to take into account this point here. How can we best describe the 
distribution of those data points about that line of best fit, what we really want to have is some kind of deviation from that straight line, kind of like our standard deviation method here. What we're really going to look for is the uncertainty in our slope, which we call delta m here. And we can find our uncertainty using this expression here on the bottom. So what does this expression really mean? How do we calculate it? Does it look like the standard deviation calculation we've just done? You'll find it similar. First of all, let's have a look at the numerator. We're going to sum uh, over a counter i, which is going to run from 1 to the number of measurements that I've got. So 1 to n. And we're going to sum up these terms here, delta y i. So delta y1 plus delta y2 plus delta y3, etc. What are these things? Well, they're given by this. The absolute value of y i minus y i prime. Where y1, for instance, is the black dot, and y1 prime is the value the y value on the line of best fit. So in fact, that difference, delta y1, is really equal to the length between these two points, the distance between these two points. And in fact, the absolute value signs mean that this distance has to always be positive. So this one here is positive, and it's small. This one here is positive. This one here, however, is negative. But if we take the square and then we square root it, we get a positive value. Similarly, positive value here. This one, we're going to square it and square root it. That gives me the absolute value here again and here again. So this summation here basically says add up the, all of these lengths. That's the lengths of the red lines that I've drawn here. If I take the sum of those lengths and divide by the number of lengths that I have, what I'm finding is the average length, the average departure from that line. And so if I do that roughly, I might find that it's something like this, that length there. It looks like it's kind of dominated by this point here, in fact. Lastly, we're going to take this length and we're going to divide by the difference of xn minus x1. So what is that? Well that's the difference between the final point here and the initial point. This is not n minus 1, this is an actual length. So it's the length of the run. If I had 10 points it would be my tenth x value minus my first, first x value. So I've got here a run on the denominator this uh, sum over of delta yi divided by m is like a rise. It's the departure from the line of best fit in the y direction. So if I take that rise and divide by that run, I get this little amount of slope. Remembering that this uncertainty of the slope delta m is going to be either above the original slope m or below the original slope m. It's plus or minus delta m. Once again, the uncertainty of your slope tells you something about the distribution of points about your line of best fit. How well do they approach the line of best fit? In fact, we can see that in this analysis, this data point here dominated the uncertainty in the length m, so we might call that point into question. If we were to ignore that point, then we'd find that our uncertainty delta m would get a lot smaller. So in the end, we can characterize our distribution of data points by saying that they have an average slope, and there's an uncertainty in that slope. And this delta m tells us how those data points are distributed about the slope.